folks that are here that have not met you and that maybe never even heard of Tom Sawyer other than back in the in the books yeah. with the straw hat. Well, that's easy to start out with. First of all, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, um, you want to fill them in on? Okay, we'll do the super capsulized version of what happened to me and, and why I'm sitting here in front of this camera talking to you today. Um, Eleven years ago, I had a truck fall on me right here in my driveway and had the truck jacked up with the front wheels off it. The truck at that time weighed about two ton. And the truck fell on me and fell right across my chest, right in this area here, and squeezed all the air out of me and made me unable to breathe <clears throat> for a little over 15 minutes in time. Many things took place in the accident, including me having very profound uh, personalized and private thoughts such as uh, how degrading this was that if in fact I die this way that it wasn't good enough for me. Now I don't mean that arrogantly, I mean that uh, I was a very good mechanic and this wasn't fair because it wasn't my fault that the truck fell on me. There were air pockets underneath the asphalt and the driveway collapsed. So it wasn't my fault it was asphalt. Um, with that excuse and so on and with that rationale that I simply had to be where I was and be still, there's a few things that you should know about me at the time. Um, one of which was that 50 pounds ago I was a national caliber athlete. I was in excellent physical shape, very strong. I was very, uh, assure of myself and my abilities. I was, uh, as I mentioned, a good mechanic. I had the ability to hold my breath for over three minutes in time. Um, I usually did my own work. It's not that I wouldn't allow anybody else to do work for me, <clears throat> but I was usually, very honestly, the most qualified, including working on my truck. So, I should also stereotype myself a little bit and tell you that at the time I was an agnostic I've been brought up a Christian Catholic, and in spite of uh, the, the so-called learning and making my communion and confirmation, around the age of 13, I decided that that was <clears throat> very bluntly just uh, religious stuff, hocus pocus baloney, and that it really had no bearing on my personal life. In other words, very bluntly, I had no personal relationship with any kind of a god. Um, with a truck falling, I mean, it changed very instantly and very dramatically. And <clears throat> it wasn't just that I almost died, it was very bluntly that I was able to see God and experience that. Uh, and realistically, for the first time in my life. Um, also, I was pretty much an all-American guy at the time. I was 33 years old and married with two children. At that time, my son Todd was 10 years old. He was assisting me working on the truck. And as soon as the truck fell, he ran in and called the paramedics. So some of the scientific information we get about the accident was, for instance, it was called in at 7.41 in the evening. And uh, shortly after 8 o'clock that evening, the paramedics arrived at the driveway and rushed up to assist me in my extrication and my survival. Uh, during that time, many things happened, one of which was, as I was going unconscious after uh, a couple of frutal, fru frutal, frutal, yeah, that's right, frutal, frutal, futile, I know, it's something like that, uh, futile attempts to ward off the uh, oxygen deprivation and the uh, onset of the un unconscious state, you know, where you shake your head no and try real hard, some intensive thoughts were in my head that it's more important to struggle and hang on and live than it is to just give in and die. And that was at the point where it was physically um, physically uh, acceptable or okay to just give in and pass out and have all the pain and suffering and so on like that just go away. And in spite of that, you know, I did care about life. Uh, an attitude like that is important in the last few seconds of uh, a traumatic experience or a state of disease, uh, especially if it's terminal. <clears throat> And I felt that way, and I was appreciative of the last few seconds in time to struggle a little further. But I did get uh, to the point of unconsciousness, and as I went unconscious, I had the experience of seeing, and when I say seeing, I don't necessarily mean seeing with my physical eyes, it was seeing 
um, at least hypothetically, the experience, it felt exactly the same as seeing. And what I was seeing was blotches or flashes of various colors. They were very beautiful, it was very enjoyable. I don't have any scientific explanation whatsoever for what this was or why I saw it in the way that I did, but um, I first tried to describe it and, and said that it was all the colors of the spectrum. And then I learned and realized that that includes infrared and ultraviolet. And I still say that it certainly was that. And that I experienced the extreme uh, visual connotation of various colors. And uh, colors such as opalescences, phosphorescences, fluorescences, that of course I have not been able to duplicate. And it was very enjoyable and nice. Well, with it, no explanation as to either exactly what that was or why I experienced it, even 11 years later, the experience went on to just having a state of unconsciousness. Um, I had a feeling of being completely unconscious, everything blank and nothing to describe at all, and then rather instantaneously having the experience of waking up from that state. And when I say waking up, I didn't get up because the truck was still on me. Um, I didn't necessarily open my eyes or take a breath. I wasn't able to do that. So what we're really talking about is from a physically unconscious state where the last few heartbeats were experienced and my heart was stopped and, of course, all the, all the other organs were slowing down to the point and this experience of absolutely waking up was just my mind and possibly some brain functioning going on. And the perceptions that I had is what I'm describing to you now. Those uh, uh, perceptions were um, feeling absolutely awake. Everything was vivid and clear. I had the same sensations as being able to hear accurately, uh, see as well of, as I've ever seen, and I've always had good vision. Uh, you know, even though I'll describe to you paradoxically that there was that there was no, um, uh, well, I lost my train of thought when a friend, <laughs> a friend just drove by. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was a sense of timelessness. I realized that very bluntly there was no such thing as time. Um, and in this timeless state, I had the experience of, for instance, trying to look, trying to experience where am I, what's going on here, and looking around just as though you would do it physically. It was the you know, same feeling, same sensations as that. Looking around and thinking, what in the world is this? Where am I? And being able to only see absolute darkness. There were no identifiable objects. It was absolutely black, opaque. And with this realization, even though I wasn't frightened by this, this was still comfortable, the next experience that I can describe to you is having that darkness or blackness just take the shape of a tunnel. Shape of a tunnel is the best description as far as I'm concerned. I've heard other people in the last 11 years say a funnel, a tube, uh, uh, an abyss, or abyss. Um, various other descriptions, but I like the idea of a tunnel because it's cylindrical. It extends forward uh, in my circumstance to infinity. Um, it was ever so slightly funnel shaped, allowing for the depth perception. With this realization and the sighting of this tunnel, I had the feeling that I was moving forward, and it was straightforward, well-balanced, comfortable, and through the center of this tunnel. That forward motion increased in speed, although there was not wind, vibration, uh, sound. There was certainly a visual connotation.